When making a list of the most evil Nazis, it's challenging to come up with just 10. Being a Nazi, whether a concentration camp commandant or an ordinary party member, meant that you embraced the idea of German racial superiority to the extent of eliminating large groups of people deemed to be inferior. Nazism was and is evil. So who are the top 10? Here's our list, see if you agree. Number one, Adolf Hitler. Any list like this should begin with Hitler. It was Hitler who put the Nazis' machine of death into motion. Yes, there were National Socialists before Hitler, but still, until the Austrian-born future Führer joined the ranks, the party was going nowhere. Hitler was one of the most effective public speakers in history. Today, we find his speeches and rhetoric strange and disgusting because we know what many did not realize at the time. Hitler was one of the greatest mass murderers in history. Number two, Heinrich Himmler. Der Treue Heinrich. Heinrich the Loyal. Himmler. Hitler's feared chief of the SS carried out Hitler's wishes and orders without question for over a decade before the war even began. It's impossible to believe that he would have done this without the Fuhrer's approval. The Nazi organization responsible for administering the death camps was the SS. Himmler also oversaw the special action killing squads that shot over a million people before the extermination camps were completed. Himmler oversaw it all. Number three, Josef Mengele. Dr. Josef Mengele embodied the evil generated and encouraged in Nazi Germany. But unlike others on the list, Mengele was actually in the camps, killing people with his own hands. He is the most well-known of the evil cadre of Nazi doctors who carried out sadistic medical experiments on the prisoners of Auschwitz. He is also one of the many officers responsible for selecting arriving Jews for either work or immediate death in the gas chambers. Number four, Reinhard Heydrich. The extent of the Holocaust might actually have been greater had Reinhard Heydrich not been assassinated by Czech partisans in June 1942. Heydrich was the cruel governor of the Czech provinces of Bohemia and Moravia. Himmler also put him in charge of the machinery of the Nazis' final solution, as they referred to the deaths of millions. Heydrich was so cold and remorseless that it was rumored that even Himmler was wary of him. Heydrich was not the only one who coordinated and built the machinery of death, but under Himmler, he was directly in charge of the Gestapo and all of the other secret police apparatus of the Nazis. Think about that. Heydrich, rumored to have been part Jewish, was at the pinnacle, not only of the dreaded secret police, but of the SS internal police and intelligence service, the SD. Additionally, Heydrich and Adolf Eichmann put together the infamous Wannsee Conference, which formalized the Nazi final solution, set up guidelines, locations, reported progress, coordinated responsibility, and more. Number five, Adolf Eichmann. Eichmann is well known for many reasons. One reason is the TV shows and the movies about his role in the Holocaust, his escape from justice to Argentina after the war, and his dramatic kidnapping by Israeli agents. His trial in 1961 in Tel Aviv, then the capital of Israel, was deemed the trial of the century. It is there that many people heard for the first time the extent of Nazi evil. Eichmann was a bureaucrat appointed by Heydrich and Himmler to report to them directly on the overall progress of the Holocaust. Eichmann watched people get shot, gassed, and worked to death at almost every major camp and reported in clinically impersonal language on the murder of millions of people. Eichmann was the sort of all-purpose tool used by the Nazis to get things done. He unclogged the bureaucracy of death when it moved too slowly. He reported on innovations in how the camps were run, which is another way of saying he helped improve the speed and efficiency with which people were killed. Number six, Theodor Eicher. Today, Eicher is remembered chiefly only by historians or those with a particular interest in the Holocaust and or Nazi Germany. Eicher joined the Nazi party in 1928 and served as an aide to Ernst Röhm, leader of the thuggish Nazi brown shirts, who were known for their violent behavior in street fights and demonstrations before Hitler was elected. In 1930, he joined the SS, where his thoroughly brutish and immoral personality was put to use, though even many in the SS hierarchy found him loathsome and crude. Think about that. Eicher personally beat prisoners using a rhino skin whip, stripping some of them of the flesh on their back and killing them. He also ordered the beating death of others by SS guards or criminal inmates known as capos, who were given some privileges for their cruelty. Eicher even had SS men whipped for not following orders. Dachau was the model for other concentration camps to come, and Eicher personally trained many of the most infamous personalities of the Holocaust. He was shot down over Kharkiv in 1943, having been transferred to the front with the SS division he commanded, known for its cruelty and atrocities, the Death's Head Division. 
Number seven, Christian Wirth. Christian Wirth was another sadistic Nazi that even many other Nazis could not stand to be around. Franz Stengel, the first commandant of the Treblinka death camp, which eventually killed 900,000 people, said this about Wirth. Wirth was a gross and florid man and my heart sank when I met him. He stayed at Hartheim for several days at a time and came back often. When he was there, he addressed us daily at lunch with an awful crude language. Hartheim was the euthanasia center where the Nazis began experimenting with poison gas, killing people deemed useless mouths. These were the mentally retarded, epileptics, and other severely disabled children and adults. Wirth was in charge of that program, and as a result, the idea of mass gassing of prisoners developed. Wirth was in charge of the death camp at Belzech, Poland, from December 1941 through summer 1942, where he got his nickname, Christian the Cruel. It was Wirth who developed the lie perfected in the euthanasia program. The victims were going to take a shower, so they would peacefully enter the gas chambers. When they wouldn't comply, Wirth was known to beat them personally. In one instant, he used a whip to essentially tear the flesh from an old woman's face. Number eight, Kurt Franz. Franz was deputy commander of the Treblinka death camp from September 1942 to August 1943, and camp commander from August 1943 until its destruction by the Nazis in November the same year. Franz was known for his dedication to duty. He was first assigned to supervise the undressing of the Jewish prisoners before they were gassed. At Treblinka and Sobibor, another death camp, naked prisoners were not peacefully led to the gas chambers. At all other death camps besides Auschwitz, this was done with engine exhaust. Naked and helpless, they were driven through an enclosed fenced area called the tube, driven only by clubs, whips, fists, and dogs wielded by the SS and the Ukrainian guards they used as enforcers. Franz was known for all variety of cruelty, but is especially infamous for sicking his bloodthirsty St. Bernard dog Eric on them, beginning at the genitals. Number nine, Rudolf Huss. In many ways, Rudolf Huss might have been the most evil Nazi of all, along with Adolf Eichmann. This isn't just because he was the commandant of the Auschwitz extermination camp for most of its existence. Both Huss and Eichmann have been described as examples of the banality of evil. Historian Hannah Arendt's famous description, which applies to an otherwise normal person who slowly gives up their morals to succeed in a corrupt system. Yes, both Eichmann and Hearst came to believe in the superiority of the Germanic people. But in the case of both, and Eichmann in particular, evil became a job in which people became numbers. Hearst was the same, referring to his victims as cargo, destined for special treatment, which meant their extermination. As a result, the Auschwitz camp and Hearst are responsible for the deaths of upward of one million people. The most evil aspect may have been that both men denied responsibility for their actions by saying they were just following orders and were not sadists like many others. Number 10, Irma Graser. Female SS auxiliary guards were supervising the women prisoners of many camps, including Auschwitz and many concentration camps. Many of these women were known for their excessive cruelty. It seemed to many that they were especially cruel to prove to the SS men that they deserved to be guards just like them. Perhaps the worst of the worst was Irma Graser, aka the hyena of Auschwitz. Graser eventually rose to command the F-170 female guards at Auschwitz. To do that, she had to be notoriously cruel. Gracer had risen through the ranks, going from a guard at the all-female concentration camp of Sachsenhausen, where she was infamous for her bloody beatings of prisoners, using her hands, whips, clubs, and her hobnailed boots. At Auschwitz, she was often responsible for the appell, the head count. The appell was used to find out which prisoners were still alive or who had attempted to escape. It also served to see who was sick and or weak and unable to work, therefore sent to the gas. Gracer chose many women personally, and she often singled out the prettiest for death, sometimes beating them within an inch of their lives before doing so. She was also prone to randomly shooting prisoners for no apparent reason, one time calmly wiping the brain matter of one victim off her shoulder with the words, one down, doesn't matter. After the war, she was tried as a war criminal and hung by the British. She was 22. And here you have our list of the top 10 most evil Nazis. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please leave a comment down below about your thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. Subscribe to the channel as an offering to the gods of the algorithm. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.